Hi there, another multimeter review. This one is the TM510, kindly sent in by Tessman for review. I am not paid for the video, but since I am allowed to keep the meter, I mark this video as a promotion. From previous reviews, you know that this doesn't stop me from sharing all my findings with you. There's a link where you can buy this in the description of the video, it's not an affiliate link and has nothing to do with this channel. So with that out of the way, this is a smart multimeter and apparently there are different colors available. This one's marked green. The icons on the side give some idea what the feature set is, but sadly misses out clearly indicating that this meter cannot measure currents. That can easily be overlooked. The only clue on the box is the image on the front. You see AC and DC volts, ohms, continuity and NCV and that is it. What have we got? A carrying pouch which is nice to keep the meter and accessories. And a manual with instructions in 5 languages. In the pouch are two AAA batteries, Duracell, not the no-name batteries usually provided with such meters, a set of test leads and the meter itself which is surprisingly small and light. Well, it's got no batteries in it of course. The meter is protected by a green rubberized plastic sleeve. My guess is that that's what the color choice was on the box. The sleeve is a bit thin, but textured for better grip. On the rear is a window for the LED torch. No holders for probes. The manual is well written, no obvious translation issues and reasonably detailed. Sadly it doesn't fit into the pouch. Since this is a meter for beginners or occasional users, not being able to store the manual with the meter is a bit of an oversight. To change batteries you must remove the sleeve first which is thankfully not as difficult as for other budget meters. Kai Weeds, I'm looking at you. One screw into a metal insert is holding the battery compartment door, revealing the place where the two AAA cells go. Nothing else of the meter's innards is visible or exposed, like the fuses. Since this meter has no current ranges, it probably doesn't have fuses anyway, but we shall see during the teardown. Pressing the big red button for a second or so turns the meter on or off. This is probably the only action most users ever have to learn since everything else is auto. If you press the left button while turning it on you can disable the auto power off. Sadly you still get the annoying beeps every 15 minutes. The hold button only holds a reading so doesn't do anything while the meter is just hunting. A long press turns on the non-contact voltage detection or NCV. A short press on the right button turns the backlight on or off while a slightly longer turns the quite weak torchlight on or off. These two are independent from each other and very unusually don't turn themselves off after a few seconds. They stay on as long as the meter is on. For the backlight that's great, but for the torch it can be a problem because it's very easy to accidentally turn it on unnoticed when you want a backlight. To open the meter, four self-tapping screws, one in each corner, need to be removed. It comes apart very easily, revealing a very small PCB and a lot of air in an already small housing. This meter could have been easily made more compact. Let's have a closer look. There's very little going on here. The brains is that blob and it's really running the show with just a few additional components. There is what looks like a programming port down there, probably for calibration at a factory. The input selection is very interesting because it shows smart meter technology very clearly. First, input protection is the absolute bare minimum. There is what looks a clamp on the connection from the COM terminal and that is it. The positive input terminal splits into three parallel paths, each with its own chain of resistors going directly into the chip. There are two 5 meg ohm MELFs in series, so 10 meg in total, maybe for the DC voltage range. Next, a string of four SMD resistors that add up to 490k and there's a cap connecting that to another pin of the chip. Maybe that's for AC, but it's hard to tell. 
and finally a string of 330k resistors for a total of 990k. The meter seems to measure AC, DC and resistance in parallel all the time and decides what to show depending on what it sees on each input. It makes me wonder what the input resistance of this meter is. If all three strings of resistors are indeed in parallel, that calculates to just 317.3 kilo ohms, which is unusually low for a multimeter these days. Just in case, I removed the six screws that hold the PCB in place to see if there's anything of interest hiding below. I suspected the answer is no, just the LCD on a zebra strip, the backlight panel and the contact points for the three buttons. There's a cutout for the beeper on the top to increase its volume. I put the Ovon XDM1041 to use to measure the input resistance of the reassembled TM510. Very interesting, it's indeed almost spot on the calculated value, 318k at least while the meter is hunting. To see if the low input resistance improves when the meter has decided on a function, I use this setup. The TM510 measures a 5 volts DC source while I am measuring the current going into the meter, about 15.75 microamps. 5 volts divided by 15.75 microamps is 370.4 kilo ohms. No change then, pretty bad for electronics use. And AC volts is exactly the same current at the same voltage, so the same low input resistance of 317k. Another effect of the smart input is that low DC or AC voltages can't be measured. 0.7 volts and the meter does not detect it. 0.79 volts DC and still no joy. 0.8 volts and after a bit of thinking finally the meter shows a DC voltage and follows an increase by 10 millivolts as it should. It is interesting to see what happens when the voltage is decreased. Once below 0.8 volts the meter just shows auto, but 0.2 volts is interpreted as a resistance and the lower the input voltage the lower the resistance. What exactly is going on here is difficult to interpret because normally to measure ohms the meter needs to create a current going out on its leads. In other words a voltage is applied to the resistor to be tested. In this case now we have two voltage sources, the one inside the meter and the external one fighting against each other. Needless to say a meter injecting its own current while you are trying to measure low voltages in sensitive electronics is something you'd rather avoid. Besides the conflict between voltage and resistance I just demonstrated, there is a conflict between continuity and resistance. If a resistance is greater than 50 ohms, it's interpreted as resistance. But 50 ohms and below, it is treated as continuity and accompanied by an ear-piercing beep that you can't disable. I lower the volume in the video, but really, measuring actual resistance values below 50 ohms is no fun with a TM510. And continuity itself is very sluggish to say the least. That is of course understandable because as a smart meter it has first to detect the very low resistance across the probes determining that the value is 50 ohms or less and then start doing what continuity is supposed to do, beep and light LEDs. But understanding why doesn't make continuity any better. On the plus side, although nowhere written on the box or meter, the TM510 is true RMS. A true RMS meter should read 5 volts. In this test, a non-true RMS reads 1 times 1 more as the Fluke 101 on the right. To test the behavior for mixed AC plus DC, I use a rectangular wave with varying duty cycle. The red BM869S shows both the DC and AC values. The Fluke 101 on the left shows the duty cycle more for fun than necessity as the duty cycle drops, there's an increasing negative DC offset while the AC voltage gets lower and lower. At 10% the AC part is less than the DC part in absolute values and the TM510 switches automatically to show the higher of the two voltages. These are tricky conditions and the TM510 shows the values reasonably accurately, not bad. Increasing the duty cycle and because the AC voltage is now larger, the meter switches back from DC volts to AC volts. To always go for the maximum is a fair implementation, no complaints. I skip showing the test with higher than 50% duty cycle 
the TM510 behaves the same way for positive DC offsets. A quick run through the boring bits, DC volts and AC volts accuracy. Once you are above the forbidden zone of 0.8 volts, the accuracy on both is actually quite good. Both ranges are much better than their specification. Really, apart from the 0.8 volt threshold, the only issue is the low input resistance imposing a much higher load on the thing that is measured than standard digital multimeters, even low budget ones. Both issues are not a problem for household use, but for measuring electronic circuits, this meter isn't a good choice. The AC bandwidth is as expected, even slightly exceeding specification on the lower end. Using my standard 1 volt RMS, I could not determine the exact minus 3 dB point because that voltage would be below 0.8 volts, which the TM510 can't measure. Lastly, the resistance range. The meter meets its spec from 5 kilo ohms to 50 meg ohms, but it's slightly above 1.2% in the important range from 400 to 4K. Of course, if you include the plus 5 digit part, it's still in spec, but I was hoping for a bit better. On the plus side, it's not common for a budget meter to go all the way to 40 meg ohms. But I frankly gave up measuring anything below 50 ohms with the meters interpreting it as continuity, so everything is accompanied by LEDs lit up and an unstoppable loud beeping. The meter still shows ohm values, but I did not bother because it was late at night. It is always interesting how power hungry a meter is. Here I am feeding the TM510 for my bench power supply set to 3 volts while the BM869S measures the current on the main display. Please ignore the small one on top. In normal operation the meter draws about 1.2 milliamps, which is quite ok and does not change if I measure for example a 1K resistor. Continuity however drives that to more than 40 milliamps because of the extra LED and beeper making this mode very expensive in terms of battery life. Turning the backlight on and the current jumps to about 8 milliamps. And turning the torch light on in addition makes it go to more than 13 milliamps. Next, I always want to know when the low battery symbol comes on and if the meter still measures correctly. Hence, in this test where I gradually lower the supply voltage, the meter is continuously measuring a 1 kilo ohm resistor. The supply voltage is shown on the big meter. Battery low on the upper right of the TM510 display comes on at about 2.55 volts. Lowering the voltage further, the measured value stays more or less the same down to 2.39 volts. But at 2.38 volts the meter simply shuts down. And it stays that way even when I start increasing the voltage. It needs to be reset by taking the power completely off before it will work again. The hard shutdown at 2.38 volts makes the meter just marginally usable with rechargeable batteries. Their nominal voltage is 1.2 volts per cell, so 2.4 for 2. That means you will see the low bat symbol very early, with rechargeable batteries barely used. Since the TM510 seems to still measure accurately, you can ignore that and continue until the meter simply shuts down on you. Problem is that you will have no warning that this is about to happen. A few more comments. The provided leads are about 75cm long or 30 inches, have no marking, reasonably flexible but no silicon. The probes are pencil thin and short, marked CAT2 1000 volts. No amp rating because the TM510 doesn't do amps, but that also means don't accidentally use them elsewhere. The viewing angle of the display isn't great, it works best straight on. Tilting it 45 degrees up or down, the numbers have disappeared completely. NCV is sensitive and works a lot better than other meters with prominent NCV antennas sticking out that I have tested recently. It compares well with my BM235, which is the most sensitive NCV tester I have. Finally, if you have not seen a smart meter in action, here's an example of everyday use. All you have to do is turn it on. Ok, I turn the backlight on too to make it easier to read. I can grab the leads and measure a battery and the meter automatically switch to DC volts and shows 1.6 volts. 
Then I can without pause measure a resistor and the meter switches to ohms and shows it about 1 kilo ohm. And then I shove the probes right into a mains power cord and the meter switches to AC and tells me we have 240 volts AC mains at the moment. And finally do a bit of continuity testing on that screw, all without touching the meter at all. The Testman TM510 is a good fit if convenience is what you are after or you struggle with what meter function to use or looking for something for the kitchen drawer so you or your household members do not have to use your precious meters for mundane tasks like testing AA batteries or fuses. If you are into electronics and looking for a meter for your own use, I think you would be far better off with a non-smart meter. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe and if you have not already, maybe consider becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. The links in the description. As a Patreon, you always get early access to videos, blogs and other exclusive content. Thanks for watching.